No fresh cut? Fresh cut. Low energy, Mystic 7. Energize, Mystic 7. Oh, see, today's a different kind of video because today it's pouring rain in Los Angeles. Like, literally pouring. Like, I was driving to get my hair cut and I almost drove off the road several times because there were massive puddles. It's flooding in Santa Monica right now. Now, I want to get to 40, but I don't know if I want to drown doing it. So instead of going outside and risking swimming with the Magikarps, per se, today we're doing a QA and a in different parts of my house. You gotta make it interesting somehow, right? Before we answer any questions, we have some news, some big, breaking, actually incredibly exciting news to talk about the briefly. This was a long time coming and something that we've asked for for a very long time because people with nine to five jobs don't have a lot of time to raid when raids end around seven. So Niantic has extended it, I think, oh, an hour or over an hour. Either way, the raid timers are extended, so raids do now go later on into the night. So for everyone like myself, trying to get that shiny loot, if you guys do have work and you can't get out there and raid during the day, you now can raid longer at night. There's a new unknown event happening in San Francisco for GDC, the uh, letters for the unknown, obviously G, D, and C. So if you guys are in the San Francisco area or you guys have noticed an influx in unknown spawns in the SF area, it's because there is the GDC event happening, so you get the GDC unknowns. I know Ali A found some unknown there in San Francisco. Yes, he still plays Pokemon Go. Yes, he's still grinding. And he actually broke the news, so... Shout out to LA for that info. And now the big news, this tweet right here, which reads from Pokemon Go, trainers get ready to hatch some exciting Toucan eggs. Extravaganza returns on March 22nd. And then I had the cheeky little reply, well now I'm excited. Now reading over this announcement, it also was launched in game two. Trainers, it's time to get cracking on a special egg event. The Pokemon Go Extravaganza is coming back on March 22nd, which is today at 1 p.m. PDT, and this time you'll have even more chances to hatch certain Pokemon. This year, an even greater variety of Pokemon will be found in 2KM eggs, and only those eggs will be available from Pokestops throughout the event. This means that Pokemon that normally hatch from 5KM or 10KM eggs, such as Why Not or Routes, will be found in 2KM eggs until the event ends on April 2nd at 1 p.m. PDT. There will also be an increased hatch rate of certain Pokemon such as Pichu and Togepi. Your eggs, egg, eggs, egg, extra, extra, extraordinary <laughs> efforts will bring rewards. Every egg hatched during the event will also include bonus candy to help you power up your newly hatched Pokemon. Additionally, Double Stardust is available throughout the event. The in-game shop also has special boxes to help you get the most out of hatching your eggs, which includes Super incubators and star pieces. Yeah, so lace up your shoes and prepare for this egg sighting event. A couple things right here. This is incredibly <laughs> exciting because we do have double stardust during this event, which is fantastic because I've been trying to power up a lot of Pokemon recently. And with all these new shiny Pokemon, which we're going to talk about in a second too, and all these new Pokedex editions and all these new legendaries, I personally need Stardust to power all this new stuff up because I like having it high CP. Bundles with Super Incubators and Star Pieces are huge because I personally also need both of those really, really badly right now. So, Niantic, get ready because I'm about to ball out on your stuff. And then the bonus candy is huge because these are 2K eggs. These are really easy to hatch and you can get Pokedex editions out of these 2K eggs. I'm not sure if Pokemon like Beldum or Bagon are going to be hatching out of the 2Ks, but... I'm freaking in for that if they are. But either way, whatever rare Pokemon you hatch, you will get extra Stardust and extra candies for, which is humongous. So this is a big, exciting event happening starting today. Now that's not even the most exciting part of this entire video right here. We have Shinies. New Shinies, new possible Shinies coming to Pokemon Go with this event, including Shiny Togepi. Yeah, here's this little beautiful guy. Look at a little Shiny Togepi. Shiny Togepi is the big one right here because I, Togepi and having a shiny Togetic would be sick. A shiny Togetic would be dope just because that's like the rarest freaking, one of the rarest Pokemon in Pokemon Go. And having that as a shiny, one of the rarest Pokemon in Pokemon Go, that'd be lit. Also other possible shiny Pokemon coming out today that you might see in videos tomorrow or on Twitter. Magby right here, shiny Magby. This is what this looks like. Also with shiny Wobbuffet. Some interesting choices for the shinies coming out of these 2Ks, but I mean, this is just the three, possibly, possibly three new shinies coming to Pokemon Go today as you're watching this along with Shiny Bulbasaur, Venusaur, and Ivysaur coming this weekend. We have so much Shiny coming to Pokemon Go. That's the big news right there. A possible Shiny Pikachu, Magby, and Wobbuffet in Pokemon Go. Let me know in the comments, guys. Are you excited? If you do manage to hatch yourself any Shiny Pokemon that's new, make sure to comment down below and or tweet me because that is breaking because as of today, as of right now when I'm recording this, these are not in-game yet. And that's the news for the brand new Egg Extravaganza event coming to Pokemon Go. Now, speaking of this Egg Extravagant event, the first question of today's Q&A pertains to 
this event. First question, Nick Trader Tips. <laughs> I know that guy. How many egg puns will it take for Shiny Togepi to be a thing? Nick, that depends. How hungry are you? It's looking like Shiny Togepi is already a thing, so I think the amount of puns that were sent today in reply to myself and Pokemon Go, I think we could stop it there. No need to whip up anymore. The jokes were egg-tastic at first, but it definitely got old. And plus, after that coffee, reading all the puns, I was left scrambled. Just want you all to know that if I make one more pun, I will actually smash these eggs over my head. Incredibly hard. Go Valor asks, if Fortnite suddenly disappeared, how quickly would you be level 40? Hey, listen, okay, I'm not that addicted to Fortnite, all right? I only play it sometimes. I only watch it sometimes. It's like a very occasional thing, okay? Just because I like a video game doesn't mean I'm not playing another video game. We're gonna get to 40. On the real though, it's not just Fortnite that's been distracting me from level 40. I've been really busy with like a lot of stuff. But yeah, I'll admit, it's a little bit of a distraction. Oh, by the way, I created a Twitch so I could live stream games like Fortnite, Pokemon Go, and IRL live streams when we're traveling. Link is in the description. Follow me on Twitch. Thundersturm, how many Sudowoodos have you caught in total? And actually looking in my Pokedex right here with the Sudowoodo, we have caught, we're seen 68, Caught 65, and we have all 65 out of 65. I have never transferred one. Nailin, come on! What do you think about PvP in Pokemon Go? So now, I know Nick did a really, really good video on PvP in Pokemon Go, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna go over, like, everything that I think about it. Not in that detail. But PvP in Pokemon Go, you guys know how I feel about it. I always, always, have always supported its addition to Pokemon Go because with, with video games and the gaming world, if you don't have something that is competitive, that brings people out and makes them want to fight each other, but, like, team up with each other and, like, battle towards common and goals and bring their teams up like that aspect of video games is what makes video games so popular especially in the Pokemon series the competitive battling aspect is literally what Pokemon is built around yes I know Pokemon go is like a go outside an adventure kind of preface but like we need a competitive aspect to it. Oh my god, just like watching all these tournaments happen for other games and knowing how big Pokemon Go's fan base is and how big Pokemon's fan base is, we, there could be like just na national, worldwide, big, humongous tournaments for this game. If there was a successfully added PvP aspect added to the game, it would blow Pokemon Go up again. It obviously wouldn't be as, it wouldn't be that big, but like it would give, it would gain some traction. And, you know, new people would come in and want to play, or people who used to play would definitely want to come back and do more in Pokemon Go because there was an aspect that like, you know, you, you got Pokemon, you went out, you got good Pokemon in the wild, you powered them up, you trained them up, you did whatever, and then now, hey, you can battle them against your friends, against other people, against other teams, you can make maybe battle groups or like squads and you can do tournaments, there's local leaderboards, like if that aspect was added to Pokemon Go, believe me when I say this, this game would be in every way, shape, and form of the phrase and word, it would be safe. I'm a huge, huge supporter of PvP. I'm not exactly sure what Nick said in his video because I have not watched it, but if he is against it, Nick, we're fighting. I'm just kidding, but like I'm sure his video is very like in-depth, but this is just like a, a very, very broad idea and a broad semi-answer on my take on PvP, but humongous supporter of it. It's gotta be added to the game. We need PvP. So that's my answer. That was a lot longer than I wanted it to be in my head hurts. Jonas, what do you think of Pokestop submission? Do you think we will get it soon? And if we do, how do you think it's going to work? Well, Pokestop submission, uh, we saw some stuff in the code regarding that. I, I, I'm such, that's another thing I'm a big supporter of. We're almost, what, like two years into Pokemon Go and the rural issue is still an issue. Rural people, we have not forgotten about you. We know that there's still massive struggles in rural communities all over the world, but like, there's, re we've talked about this, there's reasons behind why rural areas are slow and city areas are fast. Anything at this point to help people in places where Pokemon Go sucks play Pokemon Go without it sucking too much would be awesome to have. And a Pokestop submission, that would help fix that issue. The addition of Pokestops and gyms has always been a thing. Like they've, they've continuously done that over the past year and a half. So if they improve it with a Pokestop submission portal, That'd be awesome. Okay, I'm gonna send my YouTuber chair for this one because this is a YouTuber question. Mr. Caterpie, any tips for aspiring Pokemon Go YouTubers? Now, right now is a great time to be hopping into the Pokemon Go YouTube scene, and it's just evident by how much newer Pokemon Go YouTubers have been growing lately. It's, it's actually a growing community for smaller creators. Even Nick and I have been gaining subs lately. Imagine that. Aspiring Pokemon Go YouTubers just Upload, keep up with the updates, upload what you think is fun, what you think you enjoy in the game, and if it picks up, it picks up. If you genuinely enjoy this game, and you upload videos showing you doing fun things in the game and genuinely enjoying it, people are gonna be gravitated towards you, especially people who also genuinely enjoy it. Also, if you've got like your community involved, there's gonna be people who enjoy watching that part of it because the community aspect is huge in Pokemon Go. Oh, and if you're gonna do a YouTube channel for Pokemon Go, don't be a spoof YouTuber. Tech Wolf Gamer, what Pokemon are you most excited for when Gen 4 releases? Oh boy. We gotta go on an adventure for this answer.
Wrong room. Bonsley. Two reasons. One, this is Sudowoodo's baby, so it's my baby. And two, this is the only Generation 4 Pokemon that I actually know, so this guy. What's the weirdest thing that ever happened to you while playing Pokemon Go from Pratyush? Let me think. And then it gives you your health back after. We just beat that gym, by the way. That's awesome. Fixed. So you have to worry about the egg dates being messed up. And also, stuff. I want to take the freaky tiki gym. We're going to put up our 2705 Sakura in here. Let that hold on the fort. Okay, we took it. Nice. We got the uh, the freaky tiki gym. Will we ever see Smeargle in Pokemon Go? Whenever I'm with anyone from Niantic, I always ask about that. More jokingly, but like, I kind of want to know. My guess, it comes out this update during the extravaganza update because it Paints and Easter, you paint eggs? Yeah. Here's a technical question from Pokey Vieros. I'm actually gonna put my technical glasses on while I'm wearing contacts, therefore I can't see anything. Do you think that Frenzy Plant, Hydro Cannon, or Blast Burn make the starters relevant in the metagame? You are making a really good job. Man, keep going. Regards, bro. Thank you very much. Oh god, that is hurting. Yes, I do think whew, that those new move sets will make the starters who have always been irrelevant in the meta because they're just not that good. I think they're gonna make them decent. Will it make them the best of their typing? Definitely not the best, but like, they'll actually be useful and usable after these movesets, I think. I'm sure Nick would have a much better answer than me, but I have the smarty pants glasses on for that. Thomas Boy, do you think that Pokemon Go could get bigger and more mainstream if they had things such as celebrity partnership or celebrity endorsement and partnerships with more creators? This is something that Fortnite Battle Royale is doing right now and doing very, very successfully. Tonight, Ninja is live streaming once again with Drake. They're gonna get over half a million views on Twitch. They're doing it right. They're partnering with creators very early on. They're promoting creators. They're doing it right. Niantic and Pokemon Go has never done that until recently. If they would have done that at the beginning or even maybe a year ago when it, me and Nick were getting big boy views. Yes, that would have helped out the community stay strong. It would have helped out the game. It would have helped a lot. Roger Agnew, why did you choose Team Mystic? Axel, would you upload Fortnite as much as Pokemon Go, but in different times? Here's the thing, I just want to talk about Fortnite for one question. Fortnite videos will not be a normal thing on this channel, but when they do get uploaded, it'll be a special upload of me doing some fun, like, IRL challenge. Like, you know, winning a game of Fortnite in an airport, or in public, or on a plane. You know, something cool like that. That is when Fortnite videos will be uploaded to this channel, otherwise they will be on my second channel, and I'll be live streaming it on Twitch, link in the description. And actually, I think that's our last question of the day, so I hope you all enjoyed today's video. It was definitely a different sit down in my house and answer questions video because again it was literally flooding in Santa Monica and the same thing is supposed to happen tomorrow but I'm gonna go early so I can get this extravaganza event in. We need some excellent hatches, we need to whip up some shinies, we need to clap some Togepi, that was not even, crack some Togepi's, that's rude. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video where hopefully, hopefully we hatch a shiny Pokemon or catch ourselves a shiny Lugia. Peace out guys.